Hey everyone. Hi. Good evening. Um, welcome to the 64th uh, Mary O's virtual session. Woohoo! Woohoo! Um, some disclaimers up front. First one is that some blasting has been going on outside of our apartment, which some of you have heard before, but the, um, the schedule of them doing the blasting from approximately 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. has resumed. Um, and so if you can hear that outside, we apologize on behalf of New York City's um, infrastructure, which is getting fixed, I believe, right? The, is it the electrical it's system? Gaswork, gas work, I guess. Yeah, gas I got work. an email about this. Yeah. The so, schedule is like, it's ridiculous. Like every night from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. or something. really strange schedule. Yeah. But anyways, um, we're glad for infrastructure updates. Let's yeah. just, we'll see that. And um, also, we understand that President Biden is giving an address tonight. So we may not have as many people tonight as we usually do, but, but that's probably a good um, thing to go check out as well. I'm going to check that out after the session. There's a number of things going on, actually. Yep. I think Tara O'Grady's got a show oh, yeah. yes. tonight. And I saw Louise Bicken had posted on Facebook. She's got a show tonight. Oh, man. So Busy. a lot of excuses by people who are working tonight. So that's good. Yes, and of course, part of the reason for that is because St. Patrick's Day is coming up soon. And um, we hope that you're enjoying all of the stuff that's going on online from, from all the artists. Yep. So that's great. The other thing is that today is um, the one-year anniversary of um, COVID being... Uh, declared a pandemic by the WHO. Wow. And I think both Chris and I have been feeling a little down today. And I thought to myself, I think it's because of the, uh, that's a, it's a heavy anniversary. Yeah. And it's also the anniversary, the one year anniversary of our last Broadway show was, was tonight, March 11th, yep. 2020. So I think we've both been feeling a little down about that. Um, but uh, we're glad to be here with you for the session, and we have some amazing guests tonight we're really excited about. So we will uh, raise each other's spirits here yeah. very shortly yeah. with, some, with some music. Um, oh, I had one other uh, disclaimer, <laughs> and that is that I went, out, I went up to drop my bow off at David Seagal Violins, my favorite shop here mm -hmm. in, in New York, um, to get a rehair because actually our show is recording some music on Monday which is cool that that's Very happening, cool. yeah. but I haven't gotten a rehair in who knows how long. Yeah. So I'm playing on the backup to my backup bow, and it, it's really shitty. I know I can say shit on, on YouTube, right? We won't get kicked off the air. I think after like a number of times. <laughs> okay. So. It's bad. It's bad, and it sounds bad, and I just want to say that right up front. It's gritty, and it's not my favorite bow. And actually, this is a good, this is a good um, reason for if you're a fiddle player and you want to like, make yourself sound better, Getting a Get new a bow, bow is yeah. the best way to do it. I have to say, not a new violin. The bow, the bow is the way to go. Yeah. Oh, that's a good, that's good yeah. hashtag. The bow is the way to go. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so that's why I sound bad today. I'm just gonna say that right <laughs> up front. Um, okay, our our theme for today is favorite key, and uh, we do have some photo submissions for this, yes. and um, couple. a couple. And people were creative, of course, about the use of the word key. Um, so if you want to send us something on the on the on the topic, you can uh, tunes at tune dot supply. But our first set is going to explore keys and favorite keys a little bit here. Um, so I'll tell you what it is. It's kind of complicated and it's going to be kind of a long set, but hopefully you can join in here. The first tune is um, one that I wanted to start with just because of my morose mood today. I wanted to start with something sad. <laughs> Great. Um, so we're going to start with um, Down by the Sally Gardens, just to get that out of at least my system, um, just as the kind of one year anniversary of this whole thing happening. We'll start with something kind of sad and uh, slow, and then we will go into Rolling Waves, which is one of um, our favorite tunes at Mario's to lift the spirits. And then on the topic of the theme tonight, favorite key, we're going to do something um, uh, cool and annoying probably. Is it annoying to you? It's not annoying to me. Oh, okay. Okay. I hope it's not annoying to you guys, but we're going to play. It's a good challenge. It's a, okay. Challenge might be a better word. We're going to play Silver Spear in three different keys and Silver Spear not is. Not all at the same time. No, we're going to match our keys and hopefully yeah. you will too. Um, we're going to play it first in the key of D, which is the one it's written in. And then we are going to play it in the key of C and then the key of F and then back to the key of D. And whenever I think of people playing tunes in weird keys, first of all, I think of Isaac Alderson because he loves doing oh, this. Yeah. In fact, he, loved, he loves playing Sir Spear in the key of E major, which is not fun on the violin, so we're not going to do it. Um, Maybe if you had your good bow. If I had my good bow. Yeah. bow. Let's blame everything on the bow tonight yeah. if anything goes wrong. Um, I blame all my mistakes on my bow. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, 
but we're going to try doing some transposing. And also, we were doing some, some transposing in the Irish Art Center classes, too. Oh, fun. So I'm hoping that this is uh, something that everybody can participate in. Um, it also uh, messes with your brain if you haven't done this before. Indeed. And hopefully it won't mess with mine too much. But that's what we're going we're to start with. Two times each on, on the fast tunes, because this is a big set. Um, and we'll probably just do Sally Gardens once. We'll see how we feel. Okay. How much our mood has been improved by the end of the first tune. Okay. Okay. <laughs>
didn't make it. Barely. But I also, um, I had one mistake to blame on the bow there yeah. in, in F, yes. in the F key. Yeah. It's fun to play that one in F because the um, octaves kind of get reversed. Like the A part becomes oh, yeah. the, the high octave and the B part becomes right. the low octave, at least on the fiddle, maybe not on other things. But um, okay, hopefully every, everybody made it through uh, all those keys and we will have some more talk about keys soon, including um, we will be doing a poll. Um, an online poll to see what the best key is in, in a little bit. So cool. you can um, think about your answer. Uh, I have not included keys that are not commonly played in Irish music in the poll, because otherwise the poll would have been like three pages long. No, um, don't even get started on modes. No, no, yeah. there's no modes. It's just major and minor. Uh, we're not even going to deal with modes. Now I'm going to get points taken away by, by mode people. <laughs> the mode people. The mode, they the are. mode police are going to get upset. But it's just major and minor normal keys of Irish music. You can start thinking about what your favorite one is. Um, okay, and we have right. some great guests, but did you, do we have the picture of, the, of Rural Light? Yeah. Okay, just one cool thing before we get to our esteemed guests tonight. Um, if you live in the western states... Not all of them. I don't have them list in front of me. I think there's eight Western states that um, receive a magazine if you're if you get your utilities from a certain energy conglomerate. I think this is how it works. The mag the magazine is called Rural Light, um, and if you get this magazine from your energy company, your electric company. Um, Tune Supply is on the front of the magazine this this month. Super cool. Which is crazy. And we this is actually the uh, from the inside of it. Somebody sent us a picture of it. We don't have the magazine ourselves yet, um, but you can see a whole bunch of Tune Supply artists there who you know, I'm sure. And um, so we just wanted to say, look out for that mail um, if you if you're in the Western states. I was just checking to see if avocado is in that picture. I can't. Oh shoot. I can't tell. I can't remember if avocado was there or yeah. not. Anyways, um, okay, that, that was a cool thing that happened uh, today. So, uh, without further ado, we have two um, guests today who are from the band Cherish the Ladies. And, um, of course, hopefully everybody knows about Cherish the Ladies. Um, incredible band. Let's see. I can't remember how long ago they started now. Marilla, maybe you can tell us in the comments. Something like 30 years, oh, I think. Well. Um, no idea. Yeah, it's, yes. Um, and of course, Joni Madden uh, is the kind of uh, the, the leader of the band. Um, and Morella Murray and Kathleen Boyle, who are our leaders tonight, have been in the band for, for quite some time. I have been um, lucky enough to tour with them on occasion. And um, I was looking for a picture from the first time that we toured uh, together, which was, I think, in 2010, if I remember correctly. Wow. And the first gig I played with them was with the Oklahoma City Symphony, I think. Um, and I just remember it being like a very cool, special experience because all of them are so kind and so nice and so yeah. welcoming. I, I was I was out of my mind with nervousness, but they all made me feel so, so welcome, especially Merle and KT, actually. Um, so we're really, really grateful and glad to have them on the session tonight. Um, yeah, so I think they give a little introduction, so yeah. we might as well go over Start there. Them. Here we go. Hi, everybody. How are you? My name is Morella Murray, and I'm from County Galway in Ireland. Joining me tonight is the great Kathleen Boyle from Glasgow in Scotland. Kathleen is a fantastic piano accordion player and an amazing piano player. So we're looking forward to playing tunes tonight with you. I wish that we could see you all, but that will happen one day. So I believe that this is the 64th tune supply session, virtual session. That's incredible and well done, Caitlin and Chris. That's amazing, an amazing achievement. And of course, they couldn't do it without your support. So please keep supporting them and uh, giving your generous uh, contributions as much as you can. Um, so we're really looking forward to the night ahead and uh, we're going to play some tunes. So now we're going to play some reels and uh, the first reel is called The Green Mountain and KT's grandfather, the great Neely Boyle, who was a fantastic fiddle player and composer. He also, he, he played this tune on, uh, on his record and um, he's a famous composer as well, Neely Boyle, and he wrote the tune, The Moving Cloud. So that's the first tune and then the second tune is Tom Ward's Downfall. And then the last one is the cup of tea. So the first tune's in D, we're going to play that twice. Second tune's in G, play that twice. And the third tune, I believe, is in E minor, play it twice. Okay, so one, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
that was a good way to get started. Yes. Excellent. I love seeing the two um, the two keyboards, the vertical yeah. and the horizontal keyboards. Cool. <laughs> it looks very, very cool. Um, okay, we were just discussing how it's like the first kind of nice day here in New York. What is it, like 60? Yeah, it was like mid-60s or... today. And we're boiling it's hot. hot. That's yeah. why it's the first time I've worn a t-shirt on a session in weeks. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we're already hot. I feel like in New York, you, you're either too hot or too yeah, cold. Always. That's That's how it works. Um, excellent. And it's not like we could just open the window because there's jackhammering outside, so. <laughs> and even if there wasn't jackhammering, it's very loud in this area it's just loud. all of the time. Um, I'm not helping things by drinking my hot tea. No, that's true. We should be drinking limoncello. Mm. Hint, hint. Yeah. Um, we do have a little bit of limoncello left. We forgot to pre prepare it. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to get later. it. Yeah. Um, okay. I wanted to just let everybody know in case you didn't see on the email that, um, uh, KT, Kathleen, has uh, sent along some of the sheet music for tonight's session. Mm -hmm. And um, I will put the link in the chat in case you're looking at the chat right now. And Chris will put it on screen. Um, there we go. And uh, uh, one of the pieces that KT is going to do, just if you want to look ahead, is The Homecoming, which is a tune that she wrote. Uh, one of my favorites that, tune, that um, Cherish Lady yeah. plays. So if you want to get the sheet music up on screen, you can. And of course, we're putting for now we're putting the set list over on that soundboard page. Also, um, we're trying to do it as far ahead of time as we have the tunes from the artists. So you can uh, check over yeah. there every week to see what we have in the tune box. Um, the tune box. The tune box. Good. Yeah. Um, okay, we have a quick uh, report from Toast, our cat. Um, Toast has been getting in trouble recently. Do you want to tell about um, this? Well, he's. He's been getting a little aggressive with the playtime, um, which has resulted in some unfortunate scratches, both yeah, to our scratching. arms and to our furniture. <laughs> um, so we have a small toast report that we can show you now. Yes. Toasty. Are you hot, Toasty? What are these, what are these claws doing right here? What did you just do with those a moment ago? Did you scratch, Chris? Yep. <laughs> he did. He's been scratching Chris a number of times, um, enough that I thought, I'm just going to Google and see if New York City has a cat psychologist. Yeah, I think we need that. So I did. And of course, New York City does have a cat psychologist. Naturally. Um, and of course, they do consultations on the phone yeah. during COVID. So I wrote an email to the cat psychologist yeah. to see if we can get some help um, I think that Toast just wants to play with you, he wants to play you in all particular, the yeah. all the time. Yeah. He doesn't so much want to do it to me, but um, yeah, we're looking at him. He's he, uh... <laughs> he has this new game where he waits for me to get up from my desk chair, um, yeah. and then immediately goes and sits down on the desk chair and takes over the entire thing, and then won't move. And if Chris tries to remove him, he gets scratched. Yeah. It's a great game. Um, okay, so that's the Toast Report for this week. Uh, let's move on to some more tunes. Um, I think these are waltzes, no, actually, waltzes. Um, which we haven't had in a long time. Yep. So enjoy. We're going to play a couple of waltzes. This first tune, I absolutely love it. And KT absolutely loved it, too. And it's called The Diamond. And it was written by our brilliant friend, Willie McComiskey, um, from Brooklyn, now living in Baltimore. Willie's a fantastic um, accordion player. And uh, such a lovely person here. He doesn't need any introduction, I'm sure you all know him. And uh, so that first tune is called The Diamond, and um, the second tune is an O'Carlin tune called Fanny Power. So, twice each, D and G. One, two, three, one. <laughs> Thank you. 
waltzes. Uh, we should play more waltzes. We should. I don't know very many waltzes. I know more American waltzes than Irish waltzes. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I should probably learn some more Irish waltzes. Yes. I didn't know that first one, actually, the diamond. Yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. very, very nice. I think, I th- think there's sheet music up for that one on the oh, soundboard. Well, then I have so no excuse. So we have excuse. no excuse. For we have that. no excuse. No, yeah. um, and I was just saying to Chris that there were actually three keyboards in that shot. Yes. With the accordion, KT's accordion in the background, which is, um, um, uh, it's a clue to something that will happen later. We'll just say that. So what stick around. Be? I don't know. I don't know, but it's clear to something. Um, okay, so I mentioned that we were going to do a poll of people's favorite keys. I have prepared a free internet poll on which we can do this. Um, and I'm going to put the link into the chat. Um, it's it's long and hard to type in, so you do have to at least be able to see the chat in order to get the poll. I suppose I could put it in the description real quick. Sure. Okay, so there's, yeah. there's, the, um, there's the poll. You can vote, as I mentioned um, it's only the common Irish keys that are in the poll. Otherwise, there'd be way too many, and there's no modes, just major and minor, so you can pick your favorite. Um, it doesn't have to be your favorite key to play in. It could be your favorite key to listen to, which yeah. might be different. Um, and while you are doing that, I will just remind everybody that um, our our St. Patrick's Day concert this year is not... It's not actually ours. It's not Tune Supply's concert. Tune Supply... Um, put together Villanova's uh, St. Patrick's Day concert, Villanova Center, Center for Irish Studies. Yes. And for it's, the second year in a row now, they, they yes. asked us um, with about eight hours notice to put together a concert for them last year. Three um, concerts, and, yeah. and we managed somehow. Actually, and Joni Madden was That's on right. that concert. Yes, Joni was on that concert, yeah. Um, and this year we have a few months notice, so we have a little bit um, more uh, extravagant production than we had last year. Yep, um, the musicians are We Banjo 3, One for the Foxes, and the Friel Sisters, and it's free and open to the public, but you do have to register in order to um, get the link. So I'll put that link into the comments as well, and I'll put it in the descri- description of the video on this next set. Um, and I think there's about 350 people that are signed up right yeah, now. Yeah, should be fun. It's, yeah, when you register, it's going to look like you have to be a Villanova alumni oh yeah. or something, but you don't. We've you, confirmed it with them. Right. Just select not 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 any, applicable, not applicable or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, and that's at 7 p.m. on St. Patrick's Day, uh, which is next Wednesday. We won't see you before St. Patrick's yeah. Day. So um, make sure to sign up if you want to see the concert. Um, okay, I'm going to leave the poll open because I'm actually going to put the poll into the description of the video for anybody who can't access the chat. So let's actually have our first special guest, and we will let the poll go for a few minutes. Um, this special guest is um, really interesting, and I don't actually oh, know... I just, we forgot we had oh, this picture. Oh, yes, this is the picture of us yeah. in our Villanova shirts. There we go. Um, my shirt has eyes, as you can see there. Um, yeah. That was our production picture to, yes. for the Villanova concert. Um this special guest is really interesting because I don't know a lot about her. She was recommended to us by one of the session goers. And I'm trying to remember who it was. Was it Dan Snyder? I don't know. I can't remember. Could Anyways, we, occasionally one of you will say, um, there's this amazing person. You should get them on the session. And um, if we can contact them, we, we do do that. And uh, so we did that in this case. Her, her name is Anne Martin, and she is from the Isle of Skye. Um, which is a place I have never been to, but I've heard that it's gorgeous. Um, she's going to uh, do some singing for us. Yeah. Okay, so place your votes and we'll hear a song. Pálce to Lianakro and Trotanish Sintilanski Ahanach. This is Nisha Welcome to Lianakro in the north end of the island of Skye on the west coast of Scotland. My name is Anne Martin and I'm just delighted to be with you. I'm assuming it's maybe this evening. Uh, And a big thank you to to Caitlin for reaching out across the water. It's been a long time since I was in the States. And one of the great things about uh, the pandemic that we're in is that we're all using this technology and uh, getting to travel in different ways. So I've been singing Gaelic song since a child, born and brought up here in, in the North End of Sky in a Gaelic speaking community. And I'll sing a song for you this evening that comes from a collection that was made in this area. Oh, in the 1930s, uh, this was taken down from, from people singing it at that point. So it's pretty ancient because it would have uh, come down through the oral tradition 
and it tells of a murder that uh, supposedly happened just just about a mile away from from my house here in in Limithro. Um and Kolto Manvamrach Road. Enjoy. And Kolto Manvamrach Road. Eh ho i o tiri ri ho. Chai i an blar ho. Eh ho i o horo ro ho. Eh ho i o horo ro ho. Chai i an blar ho. Eh ho i o tiri ri ho. Shishinru hursto ban. Eh ho i o horo ro ho. Eh ho i o horo ro ho. Shishinru hursto ban. Eh ho i o tiri ri ho. Toke me shan sho karn. Eh ho i o horo ro ho. Eh ho i o horo ro ho. Toke me shan sho karn. Eh ho i o tiri ri ho. Barn turn kayak pas. Eh ho i o horo ro ho. Eh ho i o horo ro ho. Barn turn kayak pas. Eh ho i o tiri ri ho. Kuala teman dan rohor. Eh ho i o horo ro ho. Eh ho i o horo ro ho. Kuala teman dan rohor. Eh ho i o tiri ri ho. Kai i an blar ho. Eh ho i o horo ro ho. Eh ho i o horo ro ho. Eh ho i o ho. Beautiful. Um, this has been one of the one of the cool things about the pandemic, if, if you can see it that way, yeah. is um, hearing from and working with uh, artists who we've never met before, and um, hopefully we'll get to play with at some point. Yes. Um, but like Anne said when she introduced herself, she hasn't been to the states in a long time either. Yeah. So uh, I suppose like it's a it's a silver lining, and maybe maybe once this is all done, some of us can meet. In person, actually, like a lot of the session goers, I've never met in person, yeah. but I feel like I know all of you, which is so crazy. Um, anyways, thanks, Anne, for joining us, and um, we'll, we'll try to have Anne back soon. Um, okay, so let's check out the poll here. Let's see, we have 32 votes. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, what do you What do you think the top is? What, am I supposed to guess yeah. without looking? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. D. I was thinking it was going to be something simple like D. Yeah. It's E minor, which is indeed an excellent oh. uh, tune for keys. So E minor is winning with 25% of the votes right now. Right. And let me tell you what is second. <laughs> oh, it's a tie for second, actually. A minor and B minor. Wow, people are going for the minors uh, right now. I can see, I can see why. Yeah. Um, I voted for E major, which I think is the happiest key um, that there is maybe B major, but then it starts getting a little like a little funky with too many sharps. Mm -hmm. E major is a good uh, a, a good uh, middle ground. Um, okay, so the voting will remain open. There is no prize, and the the, <laughs> the tunes don't win anything. The key doesn't win anything. This is just kind of out of curiosity. Um, so you can keep voting if you'd like to, and um, we're actually going to play a tune right here in the middle as we have been doing recently. Yeah. Um, before we do that, I uh, mentioned at the top of the of the session that today is the one year anniversary of the last show that we played on Broadway before everything shut down. Um, we we found out the next day at like 5 p.m. tomorrow uh, that that Broadway was closing. We didn't know at the time we played the show that it was going to be the last show. Although on the way out of the dressing room um, that night, my dressing roommate said to me that they they thought that it was going to be the last show, and I didn't believe him. I, I I knew things were bad, but I didn't think the government was going to shut things down. Frankly, yeah, right. Um, and they were right. We that was it. That was it. We haven't. We've been back a couple times to like rescue instruments and things right. like that. But um, very very strange. I pulled out some pictures from around that time. This was what the theater looked like the day after it closed. We went back up to get our stuff. And um, I'm sure if you've been to theater, you know that that light there is called the ghost light. 
And uh, at that time, the ghost light was on. Usually, it stays on all the time, right? But I, get, yeah. I would, I doubt it's been on this whole time. Uh, Do you I think know? I heard that they turned it off. They turned it off. Yeah. So that's what it looks like. And that theater, which is how old? More than 100 years old, has yeah. not had an audience for a year, yeah. which is so strange. This is a funny. <laughs> this was probably the last time I went to a bar, actually. Yeah. Before uh, everything closed down, and and somebody had ordered like 20 shots of something. Yeah. And I took a picture because it was amazing. And now it looks amazing because now we're, we haven't been able to sit at a bar for a right. year, which that looks very enticing now looking at it. Okay, what else did I pull out here? Oh, this was the supermarket store, local supermarket meat section after um, like three or four days of the pandemic. The bacon was the, the first bacon. to go. <laughs> the bacon was gone. The bacon usually lives there on the <laughs> lower left. And all the other processed meats and the, and yeah. the packaged cheeses. Yep. That was what people wanted to eat. <laughs> Um, and then I'm not going to read this poem, but we'll, I'll leave it up for a second. You can come back and read it. This we, Chris and I went up to do a radio show a few days after um, the pandemic shut everything down, and we walked around the um, Bronx Botanical Gardens. Yes. Oh, and, I, was, I was not remembering where this was from. Yeah, we yeah. did the WFUV. Right. And um, I took this picture, and the poem is very, um, I don't know, it, it, it fits well with the situation. So you can come back and read it later. Yeah. Um, weird to look at pictures from a year ago. Uh, and like when everything was changing super, super fast and we yeah. didn't know what was going on. And man, it's so strange. Anyways, on the topic of one year of Broadway Close, we're going to play for you or with you two tunes. Uh, the first one is the Cats Rambles to the Child Saucepan, which is one of the tunes I taught in the uh, Level 2 Irish Arts Center class. So hopefully some of you are there uh, out there and want to play along. And then the second one is one of the only truly traditional tunes that is in Come From Away in our Broadway show. Um, and we're going to play that so that we can warm up because we have yes. to record it on Monday with, with yeah. the band. So um, hopefully we, rem we remember how to play it. It's called the Newfoundland Reel, and it is indeed a traditional tune. I think Altan recorded it Altan, most yeah. famously. Yeah. Um, so if you know that, you can play along. Just two tunes, two or three times each. We'll see We'll see how it goes. First one, pretty pretty slow, so we can hopefully get the, um, the beginners in there. Sounds good. Okay.
Okay, I remember it. At least at that speed. It goes like twice as fast as that in the actual show. It's extremely fast in the show. <laughs> and it has a that strange Broadway ending to the B part, oh, yes. which I'm now not going to be able to do. I'm just going to keep playing yeah. the reel around. But anyway, so that's... Um, it's unusual, I think, in a in a very commercial show like a Broadway show to have something that's super authentic to right. a certain um, genre. And this show does have a, co- a couple of tunes, that one and a and a uh, couple of polkas mm-hmm. as well, which is which is very cool. I don't really so, remember what those are, but they're somewhere in, in my. I learning. don't either. We should probably do some practicing. Oh, there you go. Yeah, and there's a, a major one too. Yeah. In D. Well, I should say in Broadway they play all the keys all the time. This Very one, right? yes. Anyways, okay, anyway. we're gonna work on our practicing before Monday when we're doing some recording, which is which is pretty cool. Um, to uh, one quick thing before we have some more jigs from um, Marilla and KT, and that is uh, most of you or some of you are probably doing our subscriber series, our March subscriber series, mm-hmm. uh, March Tradvent, if you will. Um, it started on Monday, and we're a couple days in. Um, if you are a subscriber to that, you have access to our finale concert, which is going to be on Sunday the 21st, Equinox, um, at 5 p.m. Um, like for Tradvent, we're going to open up that concert to anybody who makes any contribution to any of the Tune Supply funds. There are four funds that, that are used uh, to keep this whole thing running. Um, so that includes the session fund, actually. So if anybody's going to donate to the session fund, as they usually would, um, your your contribution receipt tonight will contain the link to the concert. We think. If we set it up correctly. I hope I we did. I think we did. <laughs> okay, I hope we did. If, if it, it doesn't, let us know. If it doesn't work, let us know. But um, uh, 99% of the things that Tune Supply does are open to the public and free. We've only done uh, this two times where we've held a subscriber and contributor only concert um so uh the reason for doing this is it does it does take money to um make tune supply run unfortunately i wish it didn't but the reason it takes money is because we pay all of the artists who do anything for tune supply anything at all um money real money and uh the way the real money comes to to us not, and then to not the, bitcoin <laughs> it's real money hey bitcoin is getting pretty it's expensive getting here um Anyways, the way that we do that is through community contributions, uh, as you guys know. So um, thank you if you have been contributing this whole time. And we are going to keep this up. Um, we'll probably keep it up past the pandemic's end, although we don't know. We're, for now, still going to keep it up. So um, again... How do we know when the pandemic has ended? That's I don't know. But, you know, I was thinking, like, there was a distinct start, technically, to right. the pandemic, which was today, last year, right. which is pretty weird. So maybe there'll be a declara- declaration. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, who's even in charge? We don't even know who's in charge. Well, actually, somebody is in charge here in the U.S., which is good. Um, anyways, away from politics, back to the funds. There are four funds. Um, the uh, session fund is what you guys usually contribute to. There's also the virtual learning fund, the tune supply fund, which is uh, that's the money that keeps this whole thing uh, going in terms of like all the logistics, the website, our, uh, us doing stuff that um, uh, takes a lot of time. And then what's the last one? I'm forgetting. This artist is fund. Oh, the artist fund. The artist fund is how we pay the musicians in our concerts. So um, the way to get to those, it's very simple. Tune.supply slash about, and you can choose where to put a few bucks, and then you'll get the link to the concert. The concert has um, uh, about 25 musicians on it right now, and um, I forgot to put them up into onto the screen. Oh, yeah. But I can put their names into the into the comments. It's going to be pretty great. Um, who are the Who are the big names? Nula Kennedy. Nula's on. Um, is Marilla doing a set? Or oh yeah, no? Marilla is. Yes, Marilla is doing all of the upcoming things. She's yeah. doing all the subscriber series and the finale concert and yeah. the monster session next yeah. week, I believe. So uh, yes, thank you as always for your for your support. Okay, that was a lot of words. Let's go to some More tunes now. Okay, Jace. Hello again. How are you? We're going to play some jigs two jigs and a slip jig actually. So the first tune is in the key of D and it's a very lovely simple jig that I learned from Michael Burke from Inishbofin in County Galway. He was a, a fantastic accordion player and a, and a lovely lovely man who passed away a few years ago and um, so we, we call this tune Michael Burke's. I don't know for sure if he wrote it but I've never heard anybody else play it only him and the people out in Inishbofin. So it's that's known as Michael Burke's jig and it may not be uh, familiar to most of you 
and um but anyway after the show is done you can always rewind back and learn it if you don't know it dead easy and then the second tune is another tune uh it's from south connemara and it's called on canawan wana and uh, that's in the key of g and then the last tune uh, i was texting kt earlier today asking her about this tune and uh, she said it's known as james burns slip jig so uh there we go we play them twice each all right so one two three go <laughs> and we were already back um okay so we i say limoncello was mentioned in the comments oh well so um which is which is good timing because um this is actually the last of our limoncello from peter rayhill and um he sent some more but uh it got lost in the in the postal service yes. so um hopefully hopefully we won't go crazy without any yeah. limoncello um so cheers bears cheers to everyone out there on one year of pandemic yep. there we go um and hope you can have a drink at home there. Mm. Oh yeah, it's, nice. it's good. So the updates on the limoncello front are that Peter has made a new version, um, which is a stronger a, version, a stronger right? version, which yeah. I think he's sending us. And then he is also working on a orange cello. Yes. Which sounds really sounds interesting. Great. Made from Michael Eskin's oranges, oh. which are apparently the best oranges that anyone has ever had. In Southern California. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is, um, I feel very lucky that we're drinking, um, a drink that came from somebody's backyard lemons across the country. Very cool. That, that, that does make me feel a little happier today. <laughs> um, thanks for, thanks for the lemoncello, Peter. 
Um, okay, uh, we're to the half, half time. Uh, if you're new here, which I suspect we might have some new folks who are fa uh, fans of Morella and KT who haven't been to the session before, um, we do a um, unusual but awesome thing at the halftime, and that is we have a poem from uh, Miriam Buell, who in normal times is our main session leader at the Real Mario's, and she does read a poem in real life mm -hmm. every week, and uh, that has continued online. So let's go hear what she has this week. Hi, Mario's friends. Uh, tonight's very bad poem is in honor of National Tool Worship Day. It's a thing. I know. Crazy. Um, so we here at the Buell household are very into tools. Um, so here you go. Would you believe today we worship tools? For my part, I'm a tool fool. Why stick with tools gritty when you can have pretty? My tools are cool floral jewels. And you know, that's a bit like our session. Sure, we could focus attention. Tunes only, no jokes, no communing with folks. But that would bring session apprehension. Nor is trad music boring and plain. Players bring in some style like champagne. Tonight's guests, they are stars, cool as rovers on Mars. Their art sparkles up us humanes. And so I say, hurrah, pretty tools. Why for follow those boring old rules? Here's to our friendly session. It adds such dimension and lets us be happy tune fools. Please don't forget to chip in if you can. Help keep us going. Thank you so, so, so much to Caitlin and Chris and all the lovely special guests tonight. Mary is a star. She's on a podcast called Navigating New York. She's sending Irish soda breads for the holiday. She will make you um, a shepherd's pie to pick up or to give to a person in need in the neighborhood. So please think of that way of supporting her business too. Um, hope you're all staying safe and wearing your mask the appropriate way. Uh, not like Amos. And eat your kibble. See you soon. <laughs> One deserves applause. That Very was good. amazing. Outstanding poem, Amy. I was trying to think about the diction required to say yeah. that poem that was very involved. And um, I love Mimi's tools, and I've actually seen some of those tools before because I was gifted a hammer um, of that same sort. Yeah, I was going to say I, that looks really familiar. Yeah, we have it in the toolbox. Yeah. Um, if I had known it was tool day, we would have. I would have gotten out my favorite tools. Yeah. And we, that would have been a good um, a theme for the session, actually. As favorite well. tools. Favorite tools. Yeah, that's true. Um, and uh, that brings to mind all my favorite digging tool tools. Oh, yeah. Diggers, I, I love big diggers. Definitely. Okay, that's another. Let's not go down that um, that tangent at the moment. Um, um, chip instead, into the box if you can. There's yes. the box. Um, keeps us going. Like Caitlin said earlier, everyone who appears on Tune Supply is paid uh, normal gig wage. So except Amos. Except Amos. Yeah. We need to send Amos some send payment. Amos some Probably some treats, treats yeah. of some sort, some kibble, perhaps. Yeah. Um, but yes, our human guests are paid um, uh, cash dollars, and um, we do that through community contributions, as you all know. Um, we're coming up on our 65th session next week, um, and actually next week is also the one-year anniversary of, of this session. So it's amazing that um, we all together have kept this going this long, and uh, congratulations to all of us yes. <laughs> for, that, for this strange milestone. Um, but anyways, um, I don't think I've put the link into the comments, so I will. It's also sitting on Chris's head. you got to type that into your browser, and it is in the description also. But I'll put it in, in the comments in just a second. Um, okay, we have our second special guest for the evening. Um, this guest has been a special guest a number of times recently, actually. And I just love his playing, and he sent us an extra set, which I thought, we'll put it on the show tonight. Why not? Sure. Um, it's David Munley, and I wanted to say before David starts that uh, David teaches and he is interested in having um, more students, obviously online. So if you are interested in learning um, the box, he plays C sharp D like Chris does, but he also can teach BC, which is the more common type. He is an accordion genius, as you've probably noticed. If you've never seen him, you will quickly realize that it doesn't matter what key the box is. No. He will be able to play it. I'd suspect anything with, with buttons. Yes. He could just play yeah. it. Anyway, so keep that in mind if you're looking to learn the accordion. And here's some tunes from David. How's it going? Tune Supply, how are you doing? Dave Monley here. Uh, we'll take two tunes for the session. 
uh, maybe two reels. Uh, the first one is a tune called The Flowers of Red Melody, recorded years ago by, I think, the great Seamus Tandy. The second tune is a, a John Kelly tune from County Clare, and I call it John Kelly. And that's how I roll. The first one, G, and E minor in the second. One, two, three. So good. I love the um, the use of accidentals. Yeah. Um, just pops them in there, and they're back to the normal thing. And it's it's like ear candy. You hear yeah. it and it draws you in. Um, I also like his glasses. I haven't seen those glasses Looking yet. Looking very dapper there with very the glasses. Very dapper. Yes. Very dapper. Um, thanks to Dave for joining us. And Dave is going to be on um, the finale concert, I think. Either the monster session or the finale concert. Not confirmed I'm, yet. Not confirmed. Right. He's on one of them. Um, and we will keep getting him back for the session as well. Uh, okay, community pictures. So this week's theme was a little, str a little strange, a little hard for sending in a picture, but a, a number of people actually did a really good job at this. So yeah. let's let's see here. This is Angela Botzer. Angela Botzer's favorite key is D. Yes, this is a really excellent uh, music theory um, nerd picture because um, hopefully everybody knows two sharps is D major. Oh, I thought there was some like deeper level with the tassel or something well i don't know what the tassel means oh. maybe i she... thought that you were about to explain it oh no oh, i, I was just thinking about the key signature maybe angela can tell us what the tassel is um there's another interpretation of the theme this one's really good this is from dan snyder in florida um big pine key yes so he said his favorite key is big pine key which is in florida and there is a special tiny deer that lives there called the key deer hmm. and i think he said that it's endangered or there's not very many of them and here is one <laughs> they're Thanks. obviously quite friendly yeah. very cool and i think this is from last week from the birds theme right from bill connor yes okay we have a couple from last week that we didn't manage to get on because you guys sent us so many of our so many pictures about birds oyster catchers from mm -hmm. bill connor Okay, <laughs> Kurt Munkow sent three pictures. They're all great. Um, can you read the captions Let's on see, these? This one says, strange desert birds in cottonwood tree. <laughs> Excellent. Good. Um, jailbird. Jailbird. Good. I think that's him. Yeah. And this one is a real bird. Condor at Angel's Landing. California condor. Yeah. Those are huge, right? I think so. Wow, very cool. cool. Okay, Peter Morley sent this in. The caption here is, not a hummingbird. Yeah, and then it goes kind of with this other picture from Patrick Daspit, yep. which is a hummingbird. Yeah. Um, and he said that this reminded him of our logo, of course, which is oh, yeah, a hummingbird. Humming, hummingbird. And I don't know that this is a specific type, but um, it might be ruby-throated or ruby-breasted. Do you, 
I Ruby throated, throated hummingbird. We'll I have think. to ask Anna if she had any inspiration when I, she designed it. I know that she always looks up the the animals to make sure they're anatomically correct right. when she designs them. So we'll have to ask. Okay, and we also have a couple of short video clips that folks sent in today. Um, the first two are on the topic. They're who, on, on theme, yeah. yeah so this one is from Dan, I believe, as well. Dan's Snyder. Okay, yeah, this is the deer that we just... Cute. Oh my gosh, Good. some some mutual Love grooming. Those. Did you see the tiny horns? They're yeah. like this long. Very cute. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, okay, and TJ sent this one in. This is a little video of his favorite key, which is the what? one that makes everything go. Yes. Good interpretation of the theme there. I... I suspected that TJ was going to send yes. that one in before he even did. Yeah. And actually, that was also that would have fit in for our optical illusions oh, yeah. um, with the propellers yeah. looking like they do. I can't remember what, what that effect called? is, but Yeah, there's really a name cool. for that. Um, um, okay, okay and this, this one is from David. Um, this is from last week's theme. On the theme of birds, right? I think, yeah. I'm not sure what this is, so let's find I out. I can't remember. Right. <laughs> that looks yes. a little dangerous. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, I'm glad that everybody survived that mm -hmm. video. And this last one, we talked last week about loons. Um, Tara O'Grady uh, brought up loons. And then a number of people sent us videos of loons because I was talking about how cool their sound is. So this one is actually from my mom. Yep. I think it's from Montana, not Alaska, but I can't remember. So here you go. Here's a loon sound. It's so peaceful, cool. especially with the with the kayak or the canoe paddle there. Oh my gosh! So that's it for your submissions. Yes. Um, also, seeing the water there, remind, Chris and I went on the East River ferry um, yeah. uh, yesterday and today. And uh, if you live in New York and you haven't been on the East River ferry, it's the best thing. Highly recommended. It costs the same as the subway, and you can ride it all the way to Rockaway, which we did. Yeah. And um, it is it is really nice. It used to be even better because. Prior to the pandemic, there was a little bar that had a cup, uh, beer and wine and snacks you could get. Local beer and wine. To the, like, actually good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Not really like cool. the Staten Island Ferry where you get like a can of Coors. Which is also nice is fine, in a different yeah. way. But um, yeah. yeah, if you if you need to, if you're in New York and you need to get out, highly recommend yeah. it. It's really nice. Um, okay. Uh, let's have some more tunes. Oh, this okay. This is um, this is the tune that KT wrote called "The Homecoming." I think she introduces it, but I mm -hmm. just want to remind you that if you want to play along and you can read music, the music is over on the soundboard page. You can I'll put it one more time into the comments, and and you can you can read it if you like. Yep. Here we go. Hi everyone, I'm Kathleen Boyle. I'm delighted to be here, joined with my uh, bandmate Marilla Murray, playing a few tunes with you. And uh, as a special request, Manila asked that I play one of my own tunes, it's called The Homecoming. And we've actually sent the music, uh, so you should be able to download it and maybe learn it later, or maybe it's been posted before the session, I'm not too sure. But uh, it's very, very easy, it's in the key of G, so even if you don't know it, um, the first part of you just even play a descending G scale, it should kind of fit. And the second part, if you do a descending scale starting on the E minor, it works over it as well. So it's a little tune that I composed for my parents who uh, retired back home to County Donegal after living 47 years in Scotland. And they moved back home in 2007. So I wrote this wee tune to mark their retirement. And uh, it's called The Homecoming. So I hope you enjoy it and hope you enjoy playing it. <laughs>
Beautiful. Love that. Awesome. KT has written a number of really gorgeous uh, tunes. I bet. Um, some of which are on Cherish the Ladies albums, which hopefully everybody has. Um, but if not, uh, certainly go check those out. Um, thanks to uh, KT for both playing that tune and also for play- for sharing this sheet music with yeah, us. Now we can all go learn it. Yes, uh, gorgeous. It reminds me, man. Listen to listen to that. It reminds me of um, of playing with Cherish the Ladies and uh, <laughs> the when I first got the call to play with them. I had just graduated from Columbia and I was at home in Alaska for Christmas with my family. And I received an email from Joni, and um, if I remember correctly, it said, um, Hey, Caitlin, I'm wondering if you can come to Oklahoma City um, to play with the symphony there and, and Cherish the Ladies. Um, the gig is in three days, and um, here's all the music. <laughs> or half, I think it said, like, here's half the music. I'll get you the other music shortly. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that was how that was that was the gig, and I had to learn a whole concert's worth of music. In it was basically overnight because to get from Alaska to Oklahoma City took like half the right, half the time that was available between the email and the concert, um, and it was uh, it was terrifying. It was terrifying and awesome at the same time, and a huge honor. Uh, I just I remember learning learning. Um, I don't know if it was that song of of KT's. I think it might have been the one that she wrote for. A wedding I'm forgetting the name of it now but anyways great memories playing with them great memories actually playing for people with symphonies all of that sort of good stuff um i'm hoping that we get to do that again at some point soon um okay uh morella is saying yes that would be typical, right typical joni yeah. i have to say um you know joni keeps you on your feet when you play with her because yes. she will often she'll often write to you the day before and say a gig is happening tomorrow. I'm sending you a ticket, and here's a whole bunch of music that we're playing that you've never played before. Yeah. And you know, it, it's it's stressful, but it also tests your skills. <laughs> and I love it. I love it. It's great. Um, okay, we have come to the point in the night when we are going to do our words of the week. Most of you know about this already. The thing that we've been doing, it's quite hilarious, and um, I think it's awesome. I don't know about anybody else. Um, if you um, win the contest, which is you tell us what your best definition of the two words is. It can be real or not, or silly or serious, whatever you want. Chris is the judge of the best uh, definition. If you win, you get to select a tune of your choice that is printed on a shipping label, mailing label. It's a sticker, so you can peel it off and put it on yourself or somebody else or your case or whatever you want. Or on your fiddle. Please don't put it on your fiddle. Please don't do that. But um, you could, I suppose. That would break my heart if you did that. Um, Chris uh, created creates the the um, manuscript. What would you call it? The yeah, notation the yeah. um, by hand. And has he? We've sent a few of these before, so they're one of a kind. Very very by special. By hand meaning by computer. By hand on the computer. Yeah. And I print them by hand on the label printer. (laughs) Okay, so here's our words for today. Uh, Also, you don't have to accept your price if you're not as excited about it as we are. So um, that wouldn't make any sense, but no. But we we don't want to. We're not judge. We're not judgmental if you don't want to accept the price. Okay, so the words are telepheme, that's a noun, Mm -hmm. and pantagruelian. Is that how you would say that? Yes, pantagruelian. Pantagruelian. Telepheme is a noun and pantagruelian is an adjective. You can go ahead and put your guesses or definitions into the chat, and Chris is going to judge um, judge your responses. I'm going to judge you. <laughs> we just said we weren't going to judge anybody. Um, okay, and while you guys are doing that, I will just tell you about the last exciting thing um, uh, to announce today, which is next week's session. Um, is called the monster session in real life once a year we get all the leaders together who want to come to mario's and we have the most gigantic session you have ever seen it sounds like it would be terrible actually usually huge sessions are terrible but it's not it is you've been it's it's really really fun the the leaders line up against one wall the, everybody else fills the entire bar usually there's nowhere to sit people are like sitting down the bar at the at the bar um, stools so we're going to try to um, do that online Uh, next week, which is also the one-year anniversary of the session, which started on March 19th, 2020, and it's the 65th session as well. So we're going to just have a big celebration of um, one-year virtual sessions. Yep. There are about 20 or 25 people on the list, and this this list has been announced. It's over on the Facebook event. I will put that into the chat so you can go check it out, but it's it's all people who have led this session over the past year. Um, So that'll be really fun. Okay, 
Any good responses yeah. just yet? A couple good ones, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, Telefim is one who swears by a rotary dial phone. Okay, yeah, that's, that's close, actually. Okay. Let's see. Peter says, when your trousers are too tight. Um, Pantagruelian. That must be Pantagruelian, right? Uh, Harris Rothman says, when you put some oatmeal in your pocket for that's later. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a strong contender, Harris. Oh, that's really good. Let's see. Um, Pantagolian is applied to colorful mush in a bucket. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Lynn Goldfarb has, uh, how hard do you breathe when you're learning a grueling new tune at top speed? That's wow. Good. That's really good. Oh, Sean Morris, the stains on your trousers made by porridge. <laughs> I, this, I guess it's the gruel part of it mm -hmm. that people are, are thinking of. Okay. Um, a very distant theme. <laughs> <laughs> this is very simple and good. Um, and the grilling is the effort needed to put your pants on post -co your post COVID your pants post -COVID on. Post COVID pants. I've been having that problem. Um, Kim Harris, when you are from the future, but when you go back, you tap into the phone line to communicate. Oh, oh. that's really good. This is going to be hard. Okay, I already know that Harris <laughs> Rothman is one of our winners. Pant okay. Gillian, when you put some oatmeal in your pocket for later. That's really good. Congratulations, Harris. If you need just a second to choose the other one, I'm going to tell you the real definitions, and Great. then you can select that one. Okay, so these are both very interesting. I didn't know either of them. Pant is means gigantically or comically or grotesquely oversized. And I didn't realize this, but um, the words uh, gargantuan and Pant are both from a book. Um, the book is called, oh, it doesn't say the name, but it's about two giants named Gargantua and Pantagruel. And somehow Gargantuan got into our vocabulary, but Pantagruelian did not. Hmm. Isn't that weird? That's very bizarre. But they mean the same thing. They mean like a big, gigantic, uh, monstrous thing. So next time you want to say gigantic, you should probably say Pantagruelian. Okay. And then the other one, do you have a winner? I think the second winner is going to be Gail Accardi for Telefim, the bits of sound that come out when the Zoom chat is breaking up. It's because very topical. I like this one because it's very uh, topical. It's very topical. Yeah. Good. Okay. So um, Harris and Gail Accardi, you can send us, if you want to, the name of the tune that you want printed on your mailing label. And I think we have both of your addresses, but if you wouldn't mind putting it in the email as well, that saves us the trouble of of um, uh, sorting through all the e all the all the orders um, and you know the email address it's tunes at tune.supply okay the other one telephime okay this is also very very strange so a telephime was what um, Alexander Graham Bell who invented the telephone of course wanted to call the the message like the spoken message uh -oh. that comes across in the telephone because wow. I didn't know this the word telephone had already been invented um, back in 1827 uh, yeah. and the phone wasn't invented until 1876 it meant something else it meant oh it meant um a message that was transmitted or through um you know when you do like a string and a mm -hmm. cup on the end yeah that was called a telephone before no there was even a telephone wow. So Alexander Graham Bale thought, okay, we need to, we need like a word for the message that right. comes across because it can't be telegraph. Right. And telephone was already used. Right. So he wanted to call it a telepheme, which, but it didn't catch Never on. Never caught on. Isn't that now odd? we just call it a call, I guess. Yeah. Okay. This explains it. I'll just read this quickly. To telegraph is to write from a distance. A telegram is the message itself. Hmm. To telephone is to make a faraway sound. And to t and the term telepheme has been proposed for the message that is sent. Interesting. Very strange how okay. these some things get into our language and some don't. Okay. Those are your words. Um, winners, send us your <laughs> big winners. <laughs> Send Very us exciting your, prizes. Send here. us your tunes. Yeah. Okay. We have one more set of reels from uh, Kathleen and Marilla. There we go. We're back, and uh, we're going to play two tunes, two reels. So I believe tonight's theme is about the, uh, our favorite keys, and uh, the keys I love to play in are key of E major, A major. I love to play in G minor and F. So um, we're in for a treat now because KT is actually going to play the piano accordion with me. She's a fantastic piano accordion player. And I don't know whether she's to my right or to my left, but I wish she was here to play these tunes with me because I don't know how I'm going to get through with them on my own. So, um, so two reels. First reel is Phyllis's birthday. It's in the key of F and it's written by a fantastic um, accordion player from East Clare, um, and from Bradford in East Clare. That's Josephine Marsh. And the second tune is written by Connie O'Connell, a fantastic fiddle player. And he wrote this tune called The Torn Jacket. So twice each, I think. And um, 
the first key is in F, the first tune is in F and the second one is in A. Okay, so one, two, three, go. <laughs> for um, joining us and playing tunes with us and um, I hope we will see you again soon whether it's in person or on Tune Supply or at a Cherish the Ladies concert or maybe on Johnny Madden's cruise who knows so um, anyway good, keep up the great work and again congratulations to um, Caitlin and Chris on their 64th um, virtual session it's incredible and an awful lot of Hard work goes into this, so um, please support them as much as you can. And uh, thank you again for inviting us. It's been an honour and we've had a great evening. Thanks so much. Bye. Woo-hoo. Thanks, Morella. I think we should have some applause. We should. What do you think? We have an applause button. Yeah. Um, it's going to be strange when we go back to the session and you don't have a button that just creates applause. I realize I have my sound effects window turned off. Oh. So that's why there's been no great sound effects tonight. Oh, well, yeah, it's not more. too late. Lovely. Okay, there, there we go. <laughs> okay, um, thanks to Marilla. We're going to play one more tune. Don't leave yet. But um, thanks to Marilla and Katie. And um, yes, uh, you should check them out in concert if you have not done that before. Yes. Hopefully you have done that. I think there was a virtual concert that they produced. Oh yeah, which, um, not sure how you get access to it. Was it for Christmas? Yeah, it was a it was a Christmas special, I think. Yeah, yeah. Marilla, if you're still awake, maybe you can tell us how to um, how to access that concert if it's possible. And I'm not sure if they're doing anything for St. Patrick's Day, but 
check that out. Yeah. Uh, I think there's lots of St. Patrick's stuff going on. Um, and on that note, I will just remind everybody of the remaining Tune Supply things. Um, next week is the Monster Session with uh, 20 or so of our guests from the last year. Um, Villanova concert is next Wednesday. You do have to uh, register at the link. I put it right in the top of the description down there, so it's easy to access. Um, oh, should we check in on the poll? Oh, let's check on the poll. That's a good idea. Yeah. Maybe more people voted. See, maybe we have some more submissions. Um, Kurt Munka, I think, was going to try to vote a bunch of times. I see. So maybe we'll... Kurt has thrown the vote. Nope. It looks it's... like E minor is still E minor winning. is okay. still winning. And the next one, there's a big tie between D major, A major, A minor, and B minor, all with 12% mm -hmm. of the vote. Um, B all minor? the keys are great. <laughs> We're not keyist. No. We, we love all keys um, equally. Um, what else? Uh, oh, the finale, con the, the St. Patrick's finale concert, which I mentioned, um, you do need to either be part of the subscriber series, which, which you can still join if you want to, actually. Yeah. You get access to all the videos. Or you, have, you just have to make a contribution to any of the four tune supply funds of any amount, including tiny amounts. I think the minimum that the processor will let you do is $3, and that will get you the link. Um, so if you want to do that, you can just go to tune.supply slash about and all, all four of our funds that keep this running are right there. So, um, uh, and, and then when you, when, after you do that, your receipt will have the link to the concert. So it's, it's all built in. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we did it right. Yeah, I think we did. Okay. Um, so one more, um, one more set of tunes and this one is on the topic of of Strange Keys, which I do like to play in. Mm -hmm. um, the first tune actually is one written by Liz Carroll, and I taught this in the level six, no, the level four class. I think the level four class of Irish Art Center this past week. We will play it in both of the keys that I play it in and that I have heard it in. We'll start with A and then D. The tune is Wissahickon Drive. Um, then we will go into the Musical Priest, a good um, regular traditional tune in B minor, everybody's favorite key. And then we will end with, with one of my favorite keys that's very hard to play in on the fiddle, but we're going to do this one in B major. I think it's the only tune I know in B major. And we are doing it because of the topic of keys, but also because the advanced class learned this tune last week. So this is a test to see if everybody has been practicing their shifting <laughs> in the B part. Um, this is a tough one, so if you don't get it, don't worry, but it's, it's a very, very cool tune with some, some great rhythm in it. You won't go too fast. No, and two times each on these since there's a whole bunch of them. So just to remind you, we're starting in A and going to, um, oh, sorry, starting in A and going to G on the first one. Usually I do it the opposite way around, right. but we're, we're going to do A to G just for the, for the sake of the keys in this one. Okay, here we go. Two, three, four. Thank you. 
I'm smiling because this bow is so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> I'm sorry to inflict this terrible bow on everybody tonight. Yeah. I mean, it's fifty. It was a fifty dollar bow from food. Amazon. <laughs> yeah. It's. I use this as the bow in in the Broadway show that I do um, Colina with, which is where you hit the stick on the strings, and you don't want to be using a good bow for that. So I use this very cheap carbon fiber bow. It doesn't ever ever actually play on this side in this in the show no it only plays on this side so i'm sorry next week i will have a beautifully rehaired normal bow for the for the monster session um and i hope that all the advanced students out there uh were able to play along on that last one it's a tricky one tricky on, tune. On the shifting on the b part is hard yeah. the shifting and the rhythm is tricky and the key five sharps not fun actually speaking of violin capos basically your finger your one just becomes a capo uh, across the strings on that one. Yeah, I guess there's no open strings. There's no, yeah. yeah. So you just you just hold it there, which which huh. then only leaves you three three fingers right. to do anything. It's not great. <laughs> no. Okay. So thanks uh, thanks as always to everybody uh, for stopping by, especially mm -hmm. on this very busy night. We had President Biden mm -hmm. um, giving a speech, and I saw Brian Conway was doing a concert and lots of Louise Bacon. lots of musical events <laughs> happening. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for picking ours. Yes, thank you very much. And um, do you want to do the thank yeah, yous? Yeah, uh, big thanks to Morella and Kathleen Boyle. Um, both of their first time doing any sort of tune supply. Yes thing at all. So it's a great honor and uh, pleasure to have you ladies on the session. Thank you. And it's great to have Anne Martin. 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 Yes. Sorry, Anne Martin um, yep. from the Isle of Skye. And of course, our favorite, David Munley. Yes. Yep. And uh, thanks for uh, sending in your pictures and your videos and participating in the poll. Participating. Participating. I mean, participating. Um, and all the other uh, silliness that we do every week. Um, I'm feeling much better now than I was at the start of the session. It has a way great. of lifting spirits doesn't it it does even though we we are still just staring at our wall and the camera somehow i you know the energy does come through the yeah. chat and and um so thank thank you as usual for for spending your thursday night with us mm -hmm. we will look forward to um seeing you don't forget before we see you here next week the villanova concert is the night before yep um, wednesday night st patrick's night yes there's a whole program of events actually they have i think some workshops yes. or zoom classes or something yep. uh, during the day if you want to participate in those as well Yep. Um, the the link is again just right right down here in the de in the top of the description, and then we'll see you back here next week for the monster session with with a whole bunch of leaders. Yeah. So, um, happy St. Patrick's Day. Woo. Um, good night. Okay. Bye.